Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to export your Revit models to iDice. I'm going to use two Revit sample models, the basic one and this advanced one, and then we are going to review the model in iDice. Uh, so by the end of this video, you should have a very good understanding of how to prepare your models for exporting to iDice. That said, I'm not going to cover basics about how to uh, clean up your model in Revit using Polynesian and Revit. Uh, this is, I want to focus on the topics that are related to iDice export. You can watch other video tutorials for that. So I'm going to come here, click on export model. The first thing is I'm going to make sure boundary location is set at wall finish. Normally, in all the other simulation software that we support, you, you would set it to the center of the wall. But here you want to be wall finish, so you have this gap between the rooms. In places that you have separation lines, you won't see that gap. So if you want to really be uh, like the model to be really accurate about the area and like have that gap, I mean, in this case, you don't really, but then you can duplicate, draw just two separation lines. For now, I leave it as is. So let's go back here and export. So the first step is to make sure this is set to at wall finish. Then next, here you select the apertures. I have already selected them. Select doors. I have already selected them. Maybe I just select this one too because I can show you an error that happens. Then um, level one is extruded. I set the extrusion height to 3000. Level two is set to full volume. Uh, all the rooms and here is the parts room for me so I'm going to select everything and preview it okay so here's the preview a few things that I'm going to check one is of course to make sure there are these gaps um, and the second one is to check and make sure the floors are matching here the floor height unlike uh, the rooms that you want the gap for the floor height you want them to touch and that's why I set the value to 3000 <coughs> Next thing that you want to make sure is you might you want to make sure it's solve adjacency is select to none You do not want to solve adjacency when you export to IDA ice IDA ice does that automatically for you So you click on this settings here to see the settings and set it to none um Okay, let's select all the rooms and go next. Here is the place that you add all the shades. I have already added them. Maybe we can quickly preview them so you can see all the shades that are selected. So these are the shades. Uh, I didn't select the room, so you don't see the rooms here. I have selected them uh, already. Next is sensor grids, just ignore sensor grids because sensor grids are not going to be exported to IDA eyes. And finally here also, we do not export construction sets or programs at this point. Everything is set to default. So you don't want to check that. But one thing that you want to check is, again, click here on settings and make sure the wall thickness, the minimum wall thickness matches the value in your model. And this value is in meters, so it's 0.4 meters, which means 40 centimeters. Why this value is important? Because when we are exporting the model to IDA ice, the algorithm tries to draw the line around the floor, right? And when it goes and sees a gap like this, if it is less than that value, in this case 0.4, it understands it's the wall thickness, so it continues going straight instead of going inside. That's why that value is important and you want to adjust it. 0 0.4, I mean, a value between 0 0.25 to 0 0.4 should work for most of the models. Uh, and make sure, like, if this value is really high, then some of the small changes in the model that you might have, they will be ignored. So you, you don't want to set it really high too. You want to make sure the value uh, is set correctly based on the wall thickness, the, the thickness of interior wall thickness in your model. Okay, now I go ahead and export it to IDA eyes. If you don't see the option, you're probably using an older version of the Revit plugin. Just uh, download the latest version and you should see the version. So, okay, this is done. 
exported 15 rooms uh, to iDice. Let's go and see the model inside iDice. Open, go here, open. The model comes in and we see a few errors here. So let's see what are these errors about. So all the above here, the ones that you see here, they are all because this room is partially underground, like zero is here and this is partially underground. And in Ida Ice, you don't have the same floor with multiple height. So what you can do, you can just move everything up if you want and the window, so you see the window. So those are those, but this one is the one that I said, let's select it so you can see the error. So the thing is, there is a difference between how this is modeled in Revit and how, when it comes to Ida Ice. So because of wall thickness, this room is now Consider this door is considered just having you know like intersecting with the wall so you can just move it a little bit here and problem solved so I'm going to clear this messages to get a larger space here for myself um, so one thing that we want to check uh, how the building bodies are created so you can see here on the first floor we have two building bodies. One is this guy here for this, and the other one is this one. Because these are all in the same story or same level, they will be grouped together. But if I go to the second floor, so let me select something, and I'm sure there is a better way to go to the second floor, but that's how I do it. Um, now you can see for every room, you basically get its own building body and the reason you you get that because they're not extruded you know there might be an optimization for example i don't know to merge this and this but we don't do that at this point so every every single uh room that's not extruded will get its own building body but it's, it's accurately we try to make it accurately and match uh the building geometry so these are the things for you to know and expect when you do the export the other thing that the algorithm tries to do is to simplify non-rectangular apertures because IDIs cannot, at least for this version 4.0, it cannot accept um, non-rectangular non apertures. Now I'm going to export the advanced Revit sample model so we can see a case there that things might not, might not fully work and you need to do a quick edit. So this is the Revit advanced model. Uh, the process is the same. Make sure wall center um, is, no, make sure wall finish is set, sorry. Uh, next, uh, select the apertures, uh, select the doors. In this case, I'm not going to select the doors. I already showed you that. And then set the extrusion height and everything for the levels that you want. <coughs> select all the rooms. Give it some time to export the rooms. And in this case, I have already uh, selected this lobby space separately and made sure it goes all the way up. Because I'm using extruded mode, this will be simplified uh, in the model. Okay, now I have all the rooms. Let's select them all, go next. Uh, here, here we have all the shades. Let me go back and select all of them. And again, sensor grids you just ignore. Uh, for this case, the same here. So I'm going to export this to the same folder as the advanced model. This has uh, 100 something rooms. It takes a little bit longer. Okay, so this model was larger, took a little bit longer, but you have 102 rooms exported. So let's go and check this one. Open, so this is this 2023. Imports all the rooms, and you'll see you get one uh, message here that. I'll talk about it in a second. So all the rooms are here, then we can go to 3D view, so we can probably 
the other side. So the model is exported, all the shades are exported. I think one of the things that uh, it will be helpful to get a comment about is about how we export the shades right now. So every one of them are exported as a separate one. Do you want us to just join everything as a single shade? We can do that, but it's a um, right now everything, every shade is, is, is separate in the model. Okay, so let's go to this error. What it tells, it says like there are two glazing that have intersections. So this is because this two, as you can see, are on top of this one, the bigger one. So the reason this is happening is <clears throat> if we go to the Revit model here, you'll see that um, for this case, the glass is actually not rectangular happening is the algorithm tries to change this to a rectangle so when it creates the rectangle and I can't get a good view out of this it basically these ones start to crash with the other one so I can hide it in view no, that's what I needed to do so yeah that's why it was happening so this would make a rectangle and then they would intersect with these two so you had to go back and manually um, delete them to fix it but it's a very quick fix an easy one uh, but you can check the floor plates in this case uh, every floor has a single uh, building body except for this one right because it has a different height but then if you check every floor has one uh, that, that goes around uh, that that does a story Okay, I hope this was helpful uh, to give you a sense of how the uh, translator works. Uh, in summary, you want to make sure it is set at wall finish, not wall center, the boundary location for the rooms. You don't want to do solve adjacency. For the uh, advanced model, I didn't check, but um, <clears throat> I trust you will when you're exporting the model. So it is in step six here that you just go settings and make sure the solve adjacency is set to none and other than that you can also run the validation to make sure you have a valid model i i didn't run that because i knew already these models are valid but you can select all the rooms and click here on valid to get a valid model and yes this one is valid and that should be a good place to to stop uh, this video let us know if you have any comments the best place as usual is our discourse forum which is uh, discourse.pollination.cloud. Thank you so much and see you online.